In a week where we've seen volatility in financial markets increase, cryptocurrencies have seen massive losses, stocks are poised for a correction, and precious metals once again look like they're set to break to the upside. According to our guest on Goldcore TV this week, Chief Market Strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com, Garrett Soloway, the charts have some interesting tales to tell. Watch out for his prediction of a trade that could rival the gains seen in Bitcoin over the last few years. And remember, if you want to see more interviews with industry experts and thought leaders in financial markets, subscribe to Goldcore TV and hit the notification bell now. Garrett Soloway, welcome to Goldcore TV. Hey, thank you so much for having me today. It's great to be here. Now, we have uh, had an interesting week in the markets, to say the least. We're starting to see some downward moves in equities, but uh, the story of the week so far has probably been the crash in cryptocurrencies, and particularly in Bitcoin, dropping from 64,000 all the way down to, well, it's trading at 40,000 now, but it touched off, it touched off 30,000. Um, but maybe we might just start talking about equities and what you're seeing in the equity markets at the moment, because we're starting to see a little bit of a, a, a top forming there. Would you agree with that? I absolutely would. And, and what I'm seeing here in the markets, uh, in the equities markets, is definitely some major distribution by institutional investors. Uh, we've seen the money flows from institutions be exiting stocks, while really the main reason why markets aren't down more is you've had a lot of smaller investor money flooding into the markets. And, and that's never a good thing. You know, you want to see the big money along the markets. Um, I have a really interesting chart to show on the S&P 500 here. I'll pop up. And Great. this is the SPY chart. And you can clearly see that we've been in this kind of slowly converging wedge pattern with a trend line at the top, trend line at the bottom. And look at how the market basically, if you go back all the way to early 2020, it's kind of hammered on this upside line all along. Mm -hmm. And then the lows from 2020, which was in the COVID panic in March, you take that low and you extend it out and you have this upsloping trend line. Yeah. And what I'm fearful of for the markets is that we're getting close to breaking this lower trend line. And that's the line in the sand that I'm watching. I mean, if there's one thing you're going to watch in the equities markets, watch that line. We hit on it yesterday with the big sell-off and then they rallied us back to close above it. And today we're up a little bit. If that line breaks, watch out below. That will be a key trigger for a bigger sell-off in the markets. And what type of a move to the downside might we, might we see on the back of that? I'm looking at, you know, at least down to the daily 200 moving average, which is around 370 on the SPY. So right around 3,700 on the S&P. So, so we're talking, you know, potentially 10%-ish give or take a little bit. And that would be your first level of major support that the markets would come to uh, if we get there. And moving on to Bitcoin, as I said, it's the story of the week so far. We've had massive moves down in it. it um, it's been looking extremely vulnerable and remains extremely vulnerable. Are the charts backing that up as well? Yes, they are. In fact, the signals were there that the, that this fall was going to come. In fact, I, I just last week, I was telling a lot of investors to expect a big drop to 30,000. And literally within two days, I didn't know it was going to happen that quickly. <laughs> but within a couple of days, it happened. And I want to show you how I got to that target calculation. Please so, do. so first off, looking at Bitcoin here, you could see that we were making higher highs. So here was a high higher high, higher high, higher high. Those were all bullish signals on the way up on Bitcoin's chart. What bothered me was that we here was your low. And for the first time in a long time, we made a lower low and a lower high. Mm. And that formed what we call a head and shoulders pattern, which is a technical bearish pattern. And I'll show it to you right here. So here's your neckline. Here's your shoulder, head and shoulder. And what head and shoulders dictate is that when you break the neckline, which is this trend line, you get a measured move to the downside, and that's the target of 30,000. And again, amazing because the 30,000 level was basically hit to the penny yesterday on my charts here. And it also happened to coincide with this support area here. And if I put my moving averages in, check this out right to the 200 moving average. So I, I did end up buying a little bit yesterday. I actually already sold it. I bought it at 31,000, sold it 41,000. I nice. do think there's potentially a retrace back up on Bitcoin to this neckline. And then I actually expect another wave of selling 
to take us possibly as low as the 20,000 marker. So, um, you know, I love crypto long term. I'm a big fan of cryptocurrency and what it's able to do to diversify out of, you know, fiat currencies. But at the same time, it just got to be too much of an overcrowded trade. And and trades that are overcrowded, they have to flush out the weak hands. And then we've got kind of massive vulnerability then in the face of stories coming out of China and uh, China banning basically transactions in cryptocurrencies uh, amongst their banks. So and yeah. We- and on top, on top of that, we've got uh, we got people trying to day trade Elon Musk's mood swings and getting caught on the wrong side of it. It is it is wild, and when you see that, when you see kind of the craziness of people, you know, trying to trade off of tweets and and mentions on on various networks and stuff like that, that's telling you there's froth in it. And going back to China, what you mentioned about them banning cryptocurrencies and so forth, to me, that's a signal that they want the global picture to shift to their to shift to shift to their digital yuan um, which they're very much pushing and my guess is and this is me speculating but mm. my guess is they want to make the digital yuan the future kind of reserve currency of the world and so they don't want competition from the bitcoins and other things uh, they want people using that digital yuan and ultimately they want to dethrone the dollar as the digital currency and this makes sense if you look at what china's been doing for the last you know, multiple decades in terms of their 20 year, 30 year plan. But it's kind of crazy, uh, but it makes a lot of sense of what they're trying to do. Right. Now, moving on to precious metals, then. Um, obviously, our listeners and our audience have a very keen interest in gold and silver. We saw gold spike up earlier in the week, only to get knocked down now recently in the, in the last 24 hours or so. What are the charts now suggesting in gold? Yeah, so so the charts are showing a small, very short-term overbought situation in gold, but I'm I continue to be longer term extra bullish on gold. So here's a chart of the GLD. And what you can clearly see is that it did break out above this downsloping trend line. That's yeah. bullish. I think it just needs to digest this big move up. And one thing to note on this chart is if you look at when Bitcoin topped, that's exactly when gold began to move up. So I've talked about recently and over the last six months or so how there's been a rotation of capital where there are a lot of institutions that said, okay, let's sell some of our gold holdings and go into Bitcoin because that's the future. Now you've seen that slightly start to rotate back to gold. And gold is going to be the steady one. That's the one that you know, you're not going to have 50% swings in a day or in a couple of days on gold. And I do think that there's a place for gold in the future. I think it's going to go a lot higher. One chart I want to show you that's that's such a cool chart here. It's my favorite chart to show. Uh, let me just try to find it here. Um, is basically a Fibonacci retrace chart. So um, on this chart, you can see going back to like 1979, 1980, there was a major pivot high there at $876, yeah. give or take. And then we went into this long basic consolidation. We then came up in kind of 2007, 2008. We pierced that high and pulled back 38.2%, which is a Fibonacci retrace, Mm -hmm. before breaking sharply higher. Well, take a look at what's happened over the last year in gold. We had the 1910-ish high. We then pulled back just like we did in the 80s and the 90s into 2000. So here's your pullback. We pierced the high, and then we retraced to that 1749, 1725, 382 Fibonacci retrace. And now we're starting to move up again. So what the projections of the chart show, if you follow this, is that you should have another move in gold, much like this one here, which took us up to 1910 from that 876 move. And that again should take us close to $3,000 per ounce on gold. So gold again, very, very bullish longer term. I think it may just need to consolidate here a little bit. But again, you know, if they're going to print more money, you might as well have some gold exposure. <laughs> to say history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. Um, right. So if we look at silver, then what's the silver chart suggesting? Again, we've had uh, we've had a nice run up there, but we've had a little bit of a pullback again over the last uh, 24, 48 hours. Um, yes. Have we got that? We look like we're 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 forming a, a a very large bullish flag. Would you agree with that? I, I would agree on that one as well. Uh, the only difference here is you haven't quite broken out yet versus gold. You could arguably say it broke above that downsloping trend line. 
Here you have the SLV with a major pivot top. And then this was where the Reddit crowd kind of tried to squeeze it and failed. Um, you can see the low end here, perfect pivot point, pivot point there. So what you're looking for on the silver trade is for it to bust above this trend line. And that should then kickstart a big move to the upside. And again, you know, you could be talking, you know, as much as, you know, 40, 50 percent upside in silver should that breakout occur. But again, you might want to wait until it does occur. Uh, I think short term, you've had a, a sharp move up here. It could consolidate a little bit. But that break trend line right there is what you're going to really look for in silver to see a big breakout. Any suggestions as to levels that might uh, change your mind on the downside uh, in either gold and silver to, 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 to suggest that the uptrend is failing? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's one of the things that you always want to keep in mind is that, you know, you could have a thesis that makes total sense on the long side for a trade. It could be a stock, commodity, currency, cryptocurrency. Um, but you always want to be aware that anything can fail at any time. So it's investing and trading is all about odds, right? You want to be the house not the not the gambler, the house meaning the casino. So put the odds in your favor, but also be accepting that not every trade is going to go your way. So on silver, for instance, this upsloping trend line here that's connecting these lows, if price were to trade below that, that would change my thesis. And I would expect further downside. Uh, on the gold side of things, basically this flat line right here, if we somehow came down and we took out these recent lows going back to earlier in 2021, that would absolutely change my thesis in the short term. I don't know about the long term, but in the very short term, you would expect some downside there as well. I suppose just first to come full circle and wrap it up, uh, the bond market. We've uh, heard heard some comments out of the Fed about potentially tapering. Now, I'm not too sure what scope they really have for doing that and how dangerous that potentially could be for the overall economy. But what's the chart in the bond market suggesting? The chart in the bond market is absolutely suggesting further upside. Um, it hasn't broken yet, but there is absolutely a, a segment here that's telling us that we're creating what is called a cup and handle pattern. And I can show it here on the screen real quick. Um, you basically have this big dip here, which was you know COVID and all that stuff going on. And you can see this bullish consolidation starting here. Here's your cup. Here's your little handle. And you can connect a trend line from here to this high, which comes to about 1.75% on the 10 year. If that breaks to the upside, 1.75, you actually have a move well over 2% in the cards for the 10 year. And just thinking about it logically, you know, with all the money creation, with the economy roaring, with inflation potentially shooting up, they're gonna interest rates are going to have to go up. I think the Fed is probably doing their best to. To, to keep it down by selling 120, we're buying 120 million, a billion in bonds a month right now. But again, they're going to taper. It's going to put pressure to the upside on yields and yields definitely will go up. And that makes the thesis for earlier, we talked about the S&P possibly breaking that trend line, that would likely put pressure on the markets and bring multiples in. One thing actually, and we didn't uh, talk about this beforehand, but have you any opinion on the oil price at the moment? Yeah, so oil, oil, I am bearish on, um, which is kind of counterintuitive because it's a commodity. You would think it would go up, but I do think that the power of the economic pressure of the reopening trade has put it way above where it should be, considering the supply out there. Mm -hmm. And I do think that you will see a pullback, likely with the markets in oil, maybe as low as fifty dollars a barrel, or even a little bit below. So I do, I am bearish on oil. It's one of the few commodities I'm bearish on. But but again, that's a shorter term, one to three month target uh, move for oil. You made a, a very accurate call on Bitcoin there now, and it came true fairly quickly uh, within the space of a couple of days. Anything else you've keenly got your eye on at the moment? Um, nothing specific. I do think, again, Bitcoin has, after this bounce, you know, might last for a month or so. I do think Bitcoin heads down and gets close to 20,000, maybe even touches or pierces 20,000. Um, again, that's a major support. That's the 2017 high pivot. So I would definitely be a buyer there. And long term, I still see Bitcoin north of 100,000 or more. Um, aside from that, I think you want to be generally in cash or short equities. Um, there's a few stocks out there that I'm watching and I'm liking. You know, Viacom is one of them uh, that's been beaten down by no fault of its own due to the Archegos capital collapse that occurred. And then the Shanghai Composite. Uh, it's a very interesting chart mirroring Bitcoin. 
Um, in fact, let me just show, if you don't mind, I want to just show sure. you this chart here. So um, here is, and I'll, let me just show my screen here. Bear with me. But this was the, this is the chart of Bitcoin prior to the big breakout, right? So we all know that Bitcoin eventually went nuts to the upside and ripped and, and went to 60,000. This currently when this chart was taken, it was $9,150. So we went to about 65,000. And then what I want to do here is just throw off the Shanghai composite chart and notice the similarities here is yeah. an almost identical chart. So for me, looking 6, 12, 18 months out and thinking that the U.S. equity markets may suffer and be a little bit more on the on the depressed side because of the interest rate hikes and 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 valuations, the the Chinese stocks. If you get a breakout above thirty six hundred on the Shanghai Composite, the Shanghai Composite could pull off a move like Bitcoin, where it goes meteoric to the upside, maybe fifteen thousand, twenty thousand on the Shanghai Composite. So that's one of my fun calls going forward. I always like to see these major moves and maybe maybe be right on them. Uh, but the chart is eerily similar to that of Bitcoin prior to Bitcoin's big breakout. And uh, tell me this, uh, if our audience want to learn more about what it is that you do, where do they find you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Gareth Soloway. That's always a great place for free information where I post up charts and analysis. Um, if you're interested in exact trades, uh, stock trades and a few crypto trades and commodity trades, uh, come to inthemoneystocks.com and, and the service I run is Verified Investing Alerts. Excellent. Gareth Soloway, thanks for joining us on Goldcore TV today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It was really fun and a pleasure. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely enjoy this series of interviews with special guests like Jim Rogers and David Brady. And if you want to see more interviews with thought leaders and industry experts in financial markets, subscribe to Goldcore TV and hit the notification bell now.